I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about field validation, CSS reference, progress bars, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called FieldVal. This, as you might expect from the name, lets you create error reports for your JavaScript data. Essentially, it does field validation. Oh, so it's like a shorter version of that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, they compressed it. I'm on board. So let's go ahead and just quickly check out a demo, because that is easy. We could see if I click into the email field right here and then tab out and hit submit, that changes from saying that the field was missing to it was an invalid email address format. Now, the output that you get is interesting. You get a JSON object, which has all of the different fields in it. It says it's missing or it's invalid, along with the different keys, which correspond to the different parts of the form. Now, why in the world would you want to do something like this? Well, when you are validating data, uh, why, why would you want to do that? Here is an example of poor validation where you can really only run one at a time. So this library fixes that by allowing you to get a bunch of different validations at the same time. It allows you to just give your users a little bit better of an experience because you can catch more things before you send the data up to the server. Anyway, we will have a link in the show notes, which you can check out right below this video if you are interested. Next up is Matter.js. This is a physics library or a physics engine for the web, as you might guess from it being written in JavaScript. This is only 2D for now, but perhaps it will be 3D in the future. And this picture is pretty boring, so let's uh, go to the full demo here. What? Whoa, what is happening? What is happening? Wow. This is physics in the browser. Is this the future? Tomorrow is today. Yesterday now, already happened. You might be wondering, why would you use something like this? Why, why, does, it, yeah. why does it matter? Well, if you are making a game, that's a pretty useful use case. But perhaps you might want to use this to do some sort of cool animation, maybe something like kind of drops down and you want a few things to kind of like bounce around. Could be good for like a marketing page. It is a little bit frivolous, but there's definitely some good use cases where it could add some extra wow factor. So this is pretty easy to install. You can just include the script directly into your page, or you can install it with Bower or the Node Package Manager. And it has a lot of pretty robust features. It has physical properties such as mass, area, and density. It can do rigid bodies of any convex polygon. And it has gravity, all sorts of stuff that you might expect in a physics engine. So pretty neat stuff, not a whole lot to say about it, but uh, it is definitely pretty impressive. You know, as far as physics engine libraries go, I think I prefer mind.js over matter.js. Next up, we have a project called Material Progress. This is a quick little combination of CSS3 and pure JavaScript to implement progress bars uh, based on Google's material design. There are a few different types. I believe there are four different types here. The first one is a determinant progress bar. And you can see right here, a little example on the screen, just going from left to right, filling up the progress. It's really easy to use. Just include in your page and call new M progress. Then you get start, end, set, and increment. There are a few different kinds. We've got buffers as well, which kind of gives you a little bit of another progress bar that's intended to represent the buffer as things are loading. An indeterminate progress bar, which just means things are going to take forever and making no progress, kind of like mine and Nick's relationship. And then there's also a fourth type, which is query indeterminate and determinate, that kind of goes uh, a few different ways depending on what is going on. Anyway, you can see a few more details and check out the project on GitHub, which we'll have a link to in the show notes. We are definitely living in a material world. And I guess it's also pretty cool if you just want to make like a cool like, laser light show on your website, not really for loading bars necessarily. Yeah, that's true. I do. Cool little web disco there. All right. Web disco. 
Next up is a CSS reference from CodeDrops. This is very cool. It's an incredibly robust CSS reference. So you can click on any property here. Let's click on, say, animation. And once you click on one of those, you can see that the animation property is shorthand for all of these other properties. And of course, those are all linked within the reference. And there's just a great article for every single one of these. There's some trivia and notes. There's the official syntax. There's the different values. And then some examples. And not only that, there's also a live demo. And then, of course, browser support from caniuse.com. Wow, this is very thorough. It's really incredibly thorough. I mean, it's remarkable that there's so much detail for every single one of these. It's definitely one of the best CSS references I've ever seen. So if there's maybe a couple of elements that you're kind of stuck on and you want to learn a little bit more about them or kind of just get a different perspective on them, then this is definitely something that's worth checking out. And even if you feel like you know a lot about CSS, it's still worth checking out because every time I look through here, I always find something that maybe is new to me or I just haven't looked at it in a while, and I see how it could be used in a new way. It's very, very cool. Yeah, very cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have a library called Vicence, which is for observing changes in the visibility of DOM elements. Now, let's see if we have a demo that we can take a look at. Uh, here we go, demo page. We can just see how it works here. Uh, if we're looking at different sections of a page, for example, you can see there are three different sections, and it shows whether or not something is visible or hidden. And then as we scroll down the page, you'll be able to see on the bottom left these change between visible, fully visible, and hidden, depending on what is viewable inside the browser. Now, you could use this for certain things like showing whether or not a video is playing. If a video is visible on a page, you could maybe make it play automatically, or as you scroll, you could have it stop playing. That's something that could be really useful. Ton of different uses, and it's actually really, really easy to use. You just give it the DOM element of what you want to, uh, what you, what you want to track, and then you can call the is fully visible method, and then inside there you get a little bit of a callback. So there's more documentation. We're not going to get all the way into that. You can check it out in the show notes if you are interested in it. Very cool stuff. You could probably use that in combination with like the page visibility API, um, which both, I mean, is really good for battery life. So like you were saying, you're yeah. not like playing videos or you know showing like a photo gallery, or whatever, if it's not visible. That's pretty cool. Cool idea. Well, that is all we have time for this week. Jason, who are you on Twitter? I am at Jay Cipher. And I'm at Nick RP. And for more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes below the video. We want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll talk to you next week. See you later. What? Why, why has Google Chrome want to access my contacts? That's awkward, Google Chrome. We just. I want to see just your started, contacts. We just started hanging out, Google Chrome. Why would.